Good morning, everyone. Thank you for attending. Um, I'll try to make the class as brief as possible. So for you, for those of you who are uh, listening into the, the, the conversation earlier, uh, now it's time for you to start thinking about something that you would do, like to you do with Python. And uh, um, I'm uh, willing to help you uh, as much as I can. So um, we've actually uh, gone through the basics. Okay, so um, I don't even know how to spell. Um, so now it's time for you to start thinking about, you know, how can you use Python on a on a day to day basis, right? A lot of us have a lot of things that we want uh, or like or dislike, and uh, you can actually use Python to help you, right? So, um, uh, so today we're going to talk about uh, writing functions and methods and classes. Um, you probably think that, you know, why bother? I can just write and keep writing and writing and writing. But actually, that's not a very good practice because uh, you end up uh, writing the same code over and over again. And Sometimes you don't remember what you have done or you want to make some changes and there's a huge uh, amount of uh, backward you have to go, you know, they call this um, debt, technical debt, uh, you know, like how you owe money, you owe yourself this time to go back and clean up all the technical debt that you created. So for that reason, we have uh, functions, we have modules, all right? And then we have inside the modules, we can actually create classes, okay? So this class thing is a, is a very C++ Java concept that was, that was created almost, I don't know, 1994. I don't know, maybe some of you were not born. Um, when Java was released, it was, it was built on the concept of classes and objects, okay? The reason why they moved away from, you see like uh, in, Py, in, in Colab, it's very uh, waterfall. That means it starts at the top and then it keeps going down and down and down, right? But they found that that method doesn't really work well all the time. Although, although to a large extent, when you write the first method, it is starting there, it needs a start point, but it can branch out. Once it starts from one location, it can branch out to many locations. So you as the software developer need to keep the entire process in your mind and, and how functions are gonna call each other and how it all works and what each function does. So each time I want to call, uh, one, each time I want to call a piece of code, I put it inside a function. Okay, when I, so I just have to call the function and then that function can, can do a few things. It can take in a certain variable and uh, morph itself for that variable that was applied. So um, it's, a, it's a very efficient way of um, writing code. That's the whole idea behind it. Even uh, uh, for example, if you wanted to import uh, uh, another library, we, we've done that a few times, right? We always write import uh, pandas.pd. What pandas is, is actually a module that someone else has written and it's been installed inside the, the, the machine. Whether it's Colab or is it your own machine, doesn't matter. But the bottom line is, uh, it's a library. We call it a library, but what actually it is, it's a module. So you can see that we've already been using modules, all right? It's nothing new. It's just that we can also create our own modules and we can import it into other classes, uh, other files. So it's the same concept. So if I have a, 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 a routine task that I do all the time, for example, I want to write a line. So I don't have to keep writing print text all the time. I can just specify the variable text and call the method, uh, uh, and I can call the function like this, all right? Now, so this is what, uh, makes Python very modular. So Python is designed to be written uh, 
over itself. That means whatever code you write must always be new code. It shouldn't be the existing code. So what we do is we reuse the existing code and we write on top of it. So we can keep improving on those uh, functions that we have created before. So we don't have, we saw the, our technical debt or our technical loan uh, is less, okay? So we don't have to pay back so much. So that is why um, actually all the object orientation, orientated languages have that uh, ability. Uh, for example, Java is also like that, but Java is not as uh, friendly and flexible as uh, Python is, okay? Java is a little bit more um, strict or a little bit more type sensitive. So that one will take some time for you to figure out, but Python is a good start. If you understand how Python works, then slowly you can move on to uh, other languages later on. So that's why Python is a good language to get started with. So in this, in this uh, lesson today, we're gonna talk about uh, functions. And then uh, when you actually save the file, it, it becomes a module, right? So you can actually go to another file and just import the previous file dot the class name, the, the method name, all right? So it's that easy, it, just like how we did uh, pandas, pandas is actually another module already written, okay? And we are calling, uh, whenever we want to print anything, we are saying um, uh, pd dot, right? So that means we are, when we put the dot to, uh, a command is in, in there, we are actually calling whatever functions uh, it has, it has, right? So uh, we, we, can, we can see that this, this uh, pandas module, they have actually done a lot of work for us. They have done all the heavy lifting for us. So we don't have to go ahead and, and you know, uh, stress ourselves. We can just use these uh, modules in the way it is designed uh, for, for to achieve our uh, task. So that is the, the idea behind uh, Python and how Python is actually designed. So it's designed for you to uh, write code that is new, and improve so that you can always keep moving forward and having very little or actually shouldn't have any depth, technical depth at all, okay? So that is the purpose of this class is to make you a good programmer. So, um, so when you write a method, okay, there are certain things that come uh, directly uh, immediately from the method. And if you wanted to know what it is, you can just do uh, print PD because I've defined PD as pandas. So it's going to outline uh, what are the mode. So if you can see that pandas is a module, all right? Then I have uh, an inbuilt function for directory. If I do print directory, it will list down all those things that are available in the function, okay? In the function directory. So you have, uh, a few things uh, already here. Okay. So this one didn't run because I had to create the, I had to run the function first. And now when I run it, uh, it's, you see that it will print out whatever text I have. I, I pass into the method. So you can see that whatever that is inside the brackets is the values that I pass into it, okay? Something very nice about uh, Python, uh, which is not there in, in, in Java, is that when I define, uh, let's say I can define uh, right line, that's right line is already defined. So I can do right line two, what I can do is, um, I can actually just improve on it by, um, by uh, so, so I'm going to, uh, sorry, I'm going to pass the text like normal, right? But this time uh, I have to put the semicolon next to the, the line to, to declare that it's a method, that it ends there. And then in Python, I just need to tab it in. So it's automatically tabbed in. In most other languages, you have curly braces, 
or, or some sort of uh, character to indicate the start and end, right? But in Python, it's very, very simple. It's just tabbed in. So everything that is tabbed in will become part of that method, all right? So now, let's say I, I wanted to add uh, another, uh, let's say, uh, a title, all right? But uh, I can also specify that it's got a default value. That means uh, I can put a default value. That means uh, when I call the function, so let's call uh, right line again, all right? And I'm going to pass text, okay? And then I'm going to print the title, all right? So basically, I'm using back the same method, uh, but then I am uh, improving it with another method, okay? So that's the whole idea. So I'm actually using right line, but I'm creating a version two of right, right line, and I'm printing out, it, this is going to print out the text that I pass in. So uh, it's not going to do anything right now because I haven't called it. So I'm going to hit code. Now I'm going to give it a new text, okay? So I'm going to put a version two of right line is available, okay? And now I'm going to call the same, uh, that function that I wrote, right line two and pass text to it, all right? What do you think will happen? So when I, so it is going to print out whatever text I pass in, which was written by this method, but at the same time, I added no title because I didn't pass any value. But if I wanted to give it a title, I can write line two, I've already defined text, right? So I can put text in there, then for title, you see, when I hit the T, it's already telling me that there is a, another a parameter called title, which I can specify. So I can say, uh, I hope this makes sense. Okay, so now when I do write line two, you'll find that it prints out new version and not no title, right? So. So whenever I, I can also do it another way, uh, I can also call right line, right? Uh, right line two, and I can put text, okay? And I can put the title right in here. Uh, okay, you can see that here, I did not include title equal to. All right, I did not, uh, here I didn't put text equal to, I just put uh, text. So this is called keyword arguments, all right? Sometimes you notice that Python has got so, I mean, sorry, uh, Pandas has got so many variables, right? But you don't want to be bothered with all the others. You just want to update a particular value, right? So uh, you can actually do that by calling it by its name and then setting the equal value, equal sign, and assigning the value to that particular variable and Python knows what to do, all right? The same way I can do this, it, it also takes it by its position. So you can see this is the first position and this is the second position. So you can also use the position to indicate that this is the variables that you're passing. So this is the basics of creating uh, a function and uh, the fact that you can actually define a default value allows you to uh, polymorph it. You know what's polymorphing? That means here you can see I call a right line with one variable, but here I created, I call right line with two variables. All right. So I can choose whether I want to use it in this form or I want to use it in this form. Okay. Why we use the word polymorph, I'm sure all of you heard of the, the phase of metamorphism. Metamorphism, the, the only thing that comes to my mind about metamorphism is the butterfly, all right? What happens to the butterfly? It, it, it morphs from one form to another. That means it starts, it starts off as a, as a lava, and then it becomes a cocoon, then it becomes a butterfly. Right, and then it uh, becomes—I don't know whether they lay eggs or not—but 
uh, it becomes the lava again, then the lava becomes cocoon, and then it becomes a butterfly. So you can see that it's morphing from one state to another. That means it's going from uh, one state to another state. So we call it meta. Meta means one. There's only one form that it can uh, change from. But so it goes from uh, lava to cocoon, and then cocoon to butterfly. So this is called metamorphosis because it's morphing from one state to another state. But in object orientation, we call it polymorphism because it can go from many states to many states. So it's called polymorphism. So the same concept, you just need to expand your mind a little bit. You will realize that now uh, there is no limit to what actually you can do. You can actually create a polymorphism, a polymorphed uh, application. So that means you can create as many uh, variables that you want to pass to it, but in actual fact, it's the same butterfly. You're gonna just get the same butterfly or the same function, right? I hope this didn't like throw you all off. It's just a very, very simple concept, but just with a little bit of mind flip, you'll find that it opens up a huge paradigm of how you can write functions, right? You can write very, you can make a function very, very simple. At the same time, have very, very complex parameters that you want the user to modify. So that's what happens when you are doing machine learning, right? So when we do machine learning, you will find that the modules that we import have a lot of parameters, but they've already given default values. Default value means um, if you if you are not very uh, particular, then uh, the, the 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 default value is chosen for you. But if you are really very particular and you want to make the change, you can. So that's why it's called polymorphism. That means it, 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 it morphs itself uh, to, to your ability to um, handle the function, okay? So it's like, you know, when you buy a new car, you probably don't all use all the features in the first day, right? But as you go, you will learn that there are more and more features, but you notice that the features had already a default setting. That's what we mean by default. It means, uh, you know, this was one problem when McLaren was launching their uh, street legal F1 car, the McLaren F1, the, the problem was they would probably have uh, race drivers driving it who will buy it as a personal use. And they'll also uh, uh, will have to cater for people who do not know how to drive because they would probably want it in a, in a lucky draw or some uh, some expensive uh, lottery and and they would have inherited a, a McLaren F1. So you cannot make the car to be performing uh, someone very professional like a F1 driver to be sitting in the driver's seat. It also has to cater for, for every possible driver, right? So that's why they have a lot of default settings. If, if let's say you wanted to uh, uh, drive it on a, uh, on, on a normal road, it should have the default capabilities of doing that. That means it won't, it won't like, you know, downshift when you're trying to, you know, take the car from, uh, it, when you're trying to take the car uh, over a bump or something like that. So that's, those are things that, uh, that we consider as defaults uh, so that it knows how to behave. Uh, even my, my Honda is able to understand my driving pattern uh, the moment I, I rev it a little bit, I find that it starts to downshift and uh, gear shifting and all that starts to become more uh, shorter ratios. So these are things that, uh, that allow us to create a very nice experience for the user. All right. So that is what uh, uh, polymorphism is about. That means the, the function is actually morphing itself to fit the needs of the, of the user. All right. So this ability to create various types of uh, variables and giving it default values is allowing you to actually make your uh, code uh, better and more friendlier and more useful, right? So you can, you can keep stacking it with more and more code and making it your own, right? So whatever code you write will always be new code. So you're not, you're not going back and you can see that I didn't have to touch 
right line at all. I just had to keep improving on right line two. And like that, you can go to three, you can go to four, you can go to five, you can keep going on until uh, you come to a stable version that, you know, that has covered uh, most of uh, what you want to do, all right? So that is um, for functions, okay? So excuse me if I interchangeably use the word functions and methods because they are the same thing. Some languages call it functions, some languages call it methods, but basically is all inside the module. Whatever that is inside the module is referred to as a method or a function, okay? Uh, any questions so far? Y'all are too noisy. Okay, so after, uh, so now let's, uh, let's think a little bit further ahead. You can interrupt me whenever you have a question, okay? Um, so let's say there's a module and I want to know what all the methods that it's got. So I will actually just do print and I call the function and it will print it out for me, okay? So you can see that there are some functions that have an underscore in front of it, okay? So, uh, so uh, the underscore means don't uh, change it, although you can, but it's saying don't change it because it is, uh, it is a, 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 a initialization class, all right? So uh, let's say if we wanted to find out what built-in does, all right, so this is, you can actually do dot built in. Um, one second, I'm making a mistake here.
Okay, so print is a built-in, I mean, uh, print directory is a built-in function. So you have, um, uh, so you can see, you can do uh, directory data. So you can actually type data. List has ob list object has no attribute data. Uh, one second. For e in dir print e. Okay, these are the elements inside the So if you wanted to know more about um, a direct uh, particular module, let's say pandas, you can do print help uh, pandas. Now this is going to generate a lot of content. Okay, so, uh, so you can actually have uh, a lot of information uh, for each um, package that is delivered. So this is very, very important for yourself even. Um, so I have chosen to use pandas because we have been using pandas for quite a bit. So when you actually write a function, you should actually create some documentation for yourself. All right. So, um, so pandas is a Python package providing fast, flexible, expressive data structure designed to make working with relational and label data both easy and intuitive. So this is why Python is suited for tabular data like Excel, CSV, uh, JSON, uh, data that can be uh, based on a relationship or label, all right? So, so this is the purpose of understanding pandas. Pandas is uh, an, a derivation of NumPy. So, the, so the, the, the core of pandas is actually still running on NumPy. So, uh, some people find uh, pandas a bit slow, but of course we are not doing like big data stuff. So it's okay, right? But eventually whatever you can do with pandas, you can actually easily do with, uh, I mean, difficultly do with NumPy. So NumPy is another module, all right? So here you can see that uh, they also have uh, keyword variables that you can actually uh, make use of, okay? Um, so it's uh, usually they have like a website that you can go to to find out more about each uh, module. Here are just a few things that Pandas does well. So this is a quick heads up about each function. So you can do the same thing for matplotlibrary. You can do the same thing for OS, you know, uh, getting access to the operating system. Uh, quite a few things uh, already available uh, for you, all right? Uh, let's say uh, pandas description options. So there is an options um, object. Okay, so, so now let's continue on. Um, 
thank you for your patience. Uh, we're going to talk about classes, okay? Um, the class in, in uh, Python is uh, one of the, I would say, stripped down, simplified, easy, nice to, nice to use kind of a, of a, of a, of a uh, object, okay? So it's very, very important that you pay attention to the terminologies that I'm using, okay? The first thing is, uh, a class is a bunch of code, okay? So what I have written here is a class, okay? So now, in order for me to use this class, uh, it's useless if it's just a bunch of code, right? So I need to run it. So it's called a runtime. So on runtime, when it runs, it becomes alive. And when it becomes alive, it becomes an object. Why we call it an object is because we can touch and feel that code now. So, so when, when we have a class, when we write a class, it's just a bunch of code. That's the class. But then when I run the class, I can actually create an object out of that class. So we got to start thinking like that uh, uh, because this, this whole world is based on objects, correct? For example, a car, right? A car is an object, right? But a, we need to first define the blueprint of what is a car. That means it must have four doors, it must have four tires, uh, it must have a steering wheel, it must have an accelerator, uh, pedal, it must have a gear shifter or something like that. We must define the class, okay? But when it becomes an object, it's no longer just a car. It's a BMW or a Mercedes or a Toyota, right? So an object has got something that I can touch and feel. That's the difference between a class and an object, okay? And this statement right here, okay, is the fundamental building block of object orientation programming, which is just like how we had uh, arguments that we passed in our function, we have arguments that we can pass in our class uh, when we run the code. So when we run the code, it's going to send back an instance. Uh, an instance is basically a copy, a copy of what the class is supposed to create. And when I combine the code with the arguments, the instance becomes the object. So that means um, I create a blueprint for a car, but then I say the name of the car, the brand of the car is BMW. So when I create, when I call the class with the value BMW as the name, the instance that I get is a BMW. Okay, so why we do this is because it's another level of functions and methods and modules. Because I can create a Mercedes, a BMW, a Toyota, all with the same class. That's the whole idea. Okay, and then inside the class, I can have open door. That means all cars have to open door, right? Then I have gear shifting, all cars have gear shift, all cars need petrol or, or diesel or whatever, whatever, whatever. Then you can start creating this massive blueprint of how a car should be and all the cars will be enjoying that. And then I can create even more specific classes that is extending from the, the, the primary class to make it specific to, let's say the Audi. It's got um, what? Uh, driver sleep sensing or stuff like that, you know? So you can get very specific as to that particular model, that particular brand has got that particular function. So you can actually start uh, seeing how it becomes more and more specific and also more and more general as we go down the stack. So this is the gist of object orientation uh, programming, all right? So when I want a car, I'm gonna call the class car and I'm gonna give it all the variables that it needs to create the class, the car that I want. Same for, we have been doing this for uh, pandas as well. If you see, whenever we create pandas, okay, we, 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 call the, we call the pandas library. I always like to come back to pandas because it's something that you can understand and see and you've used it, right? So you can see that when I 
call the uh, particular pandas, uh, for example, if I want to put data inside, I have to give it the file path location of the file that I want it to load. So that means I am creating um, a class, a data frame class, because pandas will generate a data frame given the data that I give it. So now pandas is just a bunch of code, but when I call it and give it a particular file, uh, with CSV data or JSON data or Excel data, it becomes alive because now that data set has got values. I can touch and feel. I can search it. I can sort it. I can cycle through it and so many things that I can do. So that is the gist of why we create objects. So a good programmer will create an object for everything. All right. And then I write one program that calls all the objects in the correct sequence pass all the data necessary to create the output that I'm that I desire. Okay, so that is the the gist of of uh, creating classes. So a good software developer, a good software architect, we're no, no longer talking about developing, we're talking about architecture, would develop uh, modules or classes to for every uh, uh, function or for every um, object in the system, let's say login. You know, every system needs a login uh, function, right? So we create a login class. So we can modify the login class, improve on the login class as we go. So we don't have to come back and touch it each time. And once I create a login class, I can put the forget password, change password, renew password, uh, uh, what uh, system reminder uh, on password, password expiration, all of that can be handled by just one class that is talking about passwords, everything to do with passwords. So that is where your code becomes very, very efficient, okay? Because you don't want to put your password changing in some other user profile um, uh, directory or class, right? You want to keep it all consistent in one roof. So, that is the purpose of, of, of creating classes so that our mind is focused. So if you, let's say if you work in different teams, each team will take on one particular object. Okay, this object needs so many classes. Inside each class, these are the methods. They will work out everything that is there. And if you notice, this is how software is actually architectured and built because it supports reusability. It re supports uh, um, uh, what uh, the downward compatibility, uh, it allows for new features to be added on. So this is the most important uh, feature in most programming languages. Today, you can write classes in any language. Although it started off with Java and Python, uh, C++, it has now caught on to many other languages. And they have actually gone on to improve on this further as well. Okay, for example, Kotlin is another extension or improvement of Java. It's actually using the Java bytecode. It converts everything to Java bytecode. So instead of learning Java, you're better off learning Kotlin because it almost looks like Python, almost. Okay, very, very similar. And uh, uh, so you don't have to go through the whole process of, you can use the same Java compiler, you can use uh, IntelliJ, you can use, you can even write Android apps with Java, uh, uh, with Kotlin, sorry. And, and, and so it, it, so all, all, all languages are kind of slowly starting to convert. So once you understand one language, for example, right, just now Thiru Mahal uh, wanted to combine the database. What she actually needs to remember is concat and merge because concatting, concatenation and merging is in every language, okay? So you just need to know how to call that method in that particular language. So you can talk about Java or PHP or whatever. They all have that ability to concat or, and merge. But it's just that from a programmer point of view, you may not be um, aware of what the method that is you need to call. So that one takes a bit of experience and some trial and error and some sleepless nights, you know, to get there. So don't worry about it. It's um, it's normal. It's natural that we need to spend the time to to understand these things. But 
easier is to ask someone, but then that person must be available, right? So that's another problem. So it's easier to just go to Google and ask Mr. Google whether, hey, how do I merge uh, data? And then Mr. Google will tell you, you know, pretty much the answer. So once you get comfortable with that, you don't have to uh, 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 stress too much. So the idea is you must have a, a clue. You must have a basic inclination of what exactly uh, you would like to achieve. All right. So let's move on. A lot of talking, right? So I've created a class here, and in 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 Python, you have this this method called pass. That means don't do anything. Just you know, pass it on and move on. So uh, you you can create a class. So now I've created a class wonder. So I can now, now assign a class um, and wonder, and uh, you can see that uh, name is not defined. So I can actually um, create. Uh, uh, variable okay in 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 um, um, first of all I need to put that and then I need to put self okay uh, and then I need to put um, uh, name equal to uh, and then self dot name equal name all right one second how do i define self Okay. Wonder is not defined. Oh. Name is not defined. Name is not defined. Name is already defined here. I think I, I kind of uh, made too many mistakes, so that's why it's not um, reading it properly. Let me just see what went wrong here. In it, initialize is actually to initialize the class. So I can, when I put self, um, it, it's, that means it's not gonna take any variable, okay? 
and name name this one should work this one works why doesn't this work this is when we learn stuff person print wonder class name Name is not defined. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. Um, so what I had done, uh, well, I mean, I assumed that it would take this name, but I need to specify uh, uh, in the initialization. This is called uh, the initializing of this um, of this uh, of this part here. Remember, I mentioned instance equals class arguments, right? So uh, we can specify what arguments that are passed into this class by using the init uh, class. This class is required for every, uh, sorry, this method is required for every class. You can see that now I have tabbed this in and I've tabbed this in and then I've tabbed this in. So I can now, um, I can now uh, create more functions here uh, and say, um, uh, uh, and uh, and uh, put in like um, uh, variables in here. And uh, I can, so you must understand what is happening here. The self is actually uh, pointing back to this object. So whatever that has got an instance of this object will be the self. So in this case, uh, you can see that the wonder is actually a class that creates a person. Now this person is actually the self, the self that is, uh, that is part of this class because it was created by this class. So when I do person.name, I'm actually referring to the name that is inside this self. So, so maybe the word uh, self uh, may not be exactly uh, correct because of the, the way they have uh, written it. So uh, what is that? Uh, uh, so so what, what happens is that we need to um, uh, understand this concept uh, so that we understand what is going on. So whenever I create let's say a car, okay, um, I'm going to, um, uh, I need to give it an initialization value. And inside this initialization value, I have to use, so whatever that it takes on, that means whenever I assign a BMW E90 with dot name, this is the self for in, as far as this object, uh, this class is concerned. So the self is actually the object and the object dot name is different from this name. They are two different things, right? This is defined inside the class. Here I can choose what value or what attribute that we can associate to the to that to that uh, object's name value. Okay, so you can see sometimes that it can even be uh, different. I can pass in CC. And the CC value, this is actually coming in from the method that I'm calling. So you can see here, I'm doing BMW and then I'm giving it a value, which is actually name value. And that is being associated to capacity. And then when I print capacity, I get the answer. So this is a very, 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 very basic concept of classes, okay? So now I can uh, create a new class called Toyota and give it the name and give it the engine size so you can see there is a lot more things that I can do to the class, okay? So 
uh, here there is no initialization, so uh, uh, it also works. But then you can't. Uh, you, it'll, it'll just it'll just tell you that it's an object, okay? And there's nothing else inside here. But once we put self dot name, then that object has got these values. So you can see that I have already created uh, some basic uh, values. Uh, usually we never do this when we create a class. This actually comes before I create uh, the car itself. I'm just showing you. There are, uh, so basically if somebody is like very new and I want to give them some default values, I can actually say, okay, if you don't know what you want, I'll give you a Mercedes E300, all right? Uh, it's a four stroke, uh, four cylinder engine. Okay, and then it's got headlights, drive, spot indicators, turn, turning light, brakes, you know, hazard light, and so on and so forth. Engine capacity, about 2000. So like that, these are called default values. So these default values also, I have to define here. Okay, so if I wanted to do self, and then I wanted to do doors, okay, I need to give it a value doors, all right? But then uh, I also need to specify doors as, as the doors that is specified up here, all right? So, so now uh, I, I can choose not to put, or I can choose to put. So I can also put uh, this as uh, capacity, uh, CC capacity. So it automatically takes in the value. So like that, I can give it default value. So I can give it name, as a, the default value is going to be named. So I don't have to, but I still can also override it with these values. So you can see that even if I run this, nothing happens, but when I run this, um, the, the BMW and the capacity is there. So I can also uh, do something else where I can just call uh, default, uh, car and not put anything inside and then same time uh, do the printout for, for default. Actually, it doesn't like default a word, but let's try. So you can see now I've got a default value for my class. So you can see that I can hide a lot of stuff inside my classes. All right, I can even create multiple methods that come inside the class, just like how Pandas has created multiple classes for me to, to create uh, stuff. So I can hide a lot of things inside my classes. I can organize it very well into a different file. I can call it a very unique name of what it does so that I can understand what it is. The next time I want to call, I can just click there and then it will slowly tell me what uh, uh, methods I need to, uh, let's say if I put, uh, uh, so it tells me I have a CC value that I can put. Uh, if I put name, there's a name value that I can put. So it imagine, imagine uh, how easy now it is for me to create classes and extend um, the, the work that I'm doing, right? So I use this a lot because um, I can call my class from anywhere. Uh, I can give it the variables and it can, uh, create the kind of object that I'm looking for uh, that I need to use. All right. So do you all have any questions? Okay, I, I'll just give you all a few minutes to ask. Maybe some of you are still collecting your thoughts.
Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the assignment in front of you with you. So let's create uh, a class. So all we need to do is call it uh, class and call it animal. Okay, and then put a colon there. Now, uh, I am uh, going to uh, create the default uh, initialization function, which is two double uh, score, and then init, and then, uh, or is it one? I'm not sure. Yeah. So here I have to specify the self, which is the object. And then I want the type. So you can see that you must have an idea of what you want to do, then creating the class will be easier. So I'm creating self dot type is equal to type. So whenever I specify type, uh, I have to um, pass in the word type, but I want to make it a bit more default. So I create my own variable type and I put donkey. That's it. Okay, but uh, what I want to create is cats, right? So what I will do is I will create another line of code. So uh, let me compile this. Now I want to create a cat. So I call the animal uh, class and I put uh, the string cat, right? So what will I get? So now um, I can do another function def. Uh, uh, to string, this always there's a to string uh, method. Okay, so in the to string method, I will try to print uh, the self dot type. Okay, so now I'm going to create a cat. Okay, it worked. Oh, sorry, I'm going to create a cat again. Then I'm going to uh, do cat dot um to string you see so what is it going to do mm. oh i need to uh, put in the self Okay, so uh, basically uh, the self is pointing to the cat. So the two string needs the cat uh, so that it will know what was actually initialized. Then it can it can print out uh, the, the value that I want. See, it didn't do donkey, all right? So if I wanted to create another, uh, so now I have uh, the, the assignment is to create a cat object of three types of species. Okay, so what I will do is I will create um, a species. Okay, so uh, um, uh, okay, so we want species. So it's just as simple as creating species. So we have like Siamese as the default. Okay, so we have. Uh, species equal Siamese. No, we can just say species equals to species. Okay, that's the default value. So we don't have to worry about uh, what species this is. And then we can do another one here, def uh, set species okay so we want to set the species value we give it the self and then we give it the species okay and what i want to do here is self dot species equal species all right, so what I have done is take it very, very slowly, okay? 
The first one I did was I put in the type of what type of animal into the initialization. That means when I call the, this one will run automatically when I call the class. Okay, that's why it's called, that's why they say don't change this. This is called INIT actually stands for initial, initialization function. This is the initialization method that runs whenever you run a class. So this initialization is asking for type. Although it's asking for species, but I've already given it a default value as Siamese, all right? So I don't have to specify it. If I want to change the species, I can. So now I know that this cat is going to be of species uh, um, uh, uh, Siamese, right? So uh, I can um, put here self species. equal species, all right? But I can also change the species by having this function here where I pass the species. So if it's a Siamese cat, I can change it to a Persian cat, you know? So, uh, so now let's try, so now it's printed out to uh, the two string, which is the type. Now let's try and print out um, the the self dot species as well. I have to run this class again because I've made some changes to this. Okay, so you can see the class definition always must come before I call the class. Then when I call the class, no errors then I can call toString. And toString has printed out the type and the species. I can actually put uh, some coding here that so that you can clearly see how it has changed the uh, set the type, okay? We always use the toString method to tell us what's inside the method, okay? So it's one of, one of the good practices. So now, I can go on by creating uh, a Persian uh, Persian cat, right? By doing animal, calling the same animal, okay? And it's a cat because it's a type of a cat and the species is Persian, okay? So now when I do Persian, which is a different type of a cat, I can do two string, and you can see the results for yourself. Okay, we got cat, right? But why is, uh, wait, just, yeah, because species, species and species, wrong spelling. Yeah, so now you can see that I have created uh, a cat of type uh, species uh, Persian, right? So uh, I hope you understand uh, how uh, this, uh, so if I don't put anything, okay, if I just put cat, it gives me cat. Uh, and if, even if I, if I, if I uh, did something really, really uh, stupid, like not even, um, put anything, all right? I can also do that. Uh, yeah, I need to make this equal to type. Then um, we'll get a donkey, right? So uh, what what I'm uh, uh, telling you is that always be aware of what are the default values uh, that, that the system has, because sometimes it may not make sense to what you're trying to achieve. You're trying to create a cat, but it's actually set it to a donkey. So, uh, so the default values is just for you to get started, but then you can also uh, change it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, 
uh, set the cat. I'm going to call the cat, and I am. Um, uh, so the cat species is Siamese. So we, I need another uh, set function. So I just do dev. So you can see I can create as many. So I can create many uh, functions uh, that will help me uh, manage my object better. So uh, now I can do self dot type. So in case I wrongly set the type to donkey, I can do set. So I've got to run this. And then I've got to run this. And then uh, you can see that now it's still donkey. But now I'm going to do um, set uh, type to uh, cat. Okay. So now, and then I'm going to hit cat to string. So now I'm going to set the type to cat. So it was donkey, but I managed to create a, a function to call, uh, to change the type to cat. So you can see that I have done certain things that are very typical of uh, programming standards. For example, I have called this method set because set means it's like to put. All right, so uh, we, uh, we use the word set and then we use the name of the variable that we're trying to change. So this is actually not correct because it should be species. And uh, so the spelling uh, has to be correct. I mean, in order for you to know what exactly it is, all right? So basically this is what uh, we do uh, by creating a class. We can create all the functions in here and then we can just do a dot and we can call those functions dot to string, uh, dot set uh, type, dot set species. So if let's say I wanted to, uh, uh, I need to run this again, I need to run this again. And now I want to do, uh, I want to set the cat, I want to set the species to, uh, uh, what is that, uh, house cat. Sorry, that's all the cat I know. <laughs> that's all the three cats I know. So then um, uh, I can um, uh, print it out by calling cat to string. All right. And voila. Oh, type gone back to donkey because I had to run it again. So if I set this and then I run this again, you can see it changes back to cat. All right, and then the species is house cat. So you see how we can think about uh, um, uh, modifying the class to be more specific to how we want it to be. The important thing is your mind, how you think and how you organize all of this is very, very important, okay? Okay, so this is all I have for you guys for today. Um, I hope, uh, you know, this will be a stepping stone for you to start programming.